Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming back to see what we've got on the burner today. Um, my partner is uh, doing a little bit of travel, so it's going to be myself, and uh, we'll try to keep you razzled and dazzled. And so bear with me, stay with me, but today I want to talk about listening. You know, um, listening on a, either a telephone or in a conversation or just listening because I happen to run across some people. We're not going to mention any names, of course, uh, but uh, so I've run into both sides. I've run in, into the listeners, the real, real good listeners, and albeit there are very few. Uh, and the others that they don't wait for you to finish whatever it is you want to say. And, uh, and they, they just seem to step and climb all over you. Um, and it just, it, it gets a little frustrating. And, uh, sometimes I don't know if they know they do it, but when I bring it to their attention, I am kind of met with, well, you know, I'm kind of that way and I don't mean to be, and I don't mean to be rude, but, uh, Sometimes I just want to get out what I have to say. And, you know, unfortunately, I know it's a two-way conversation, but it, one's pretty much got to stop before the other one can pick up because then it gets a little, not that Chinese is bad, but it gets a little Chinese on you. And then you both aren't understanding what each other is saying. So I wanted to read just a little bit of something. So the, uh, talking about the definition of listening, it means to give one's attention to a sound. So to give one's attention to a sound. In our louder and louder world, some experts predict we are losing our ability to listen. I would agree. You know, listening is a critical mental process, extracting meaning from sounds that we hear. I mean, if we really get down to it, that's really what's going on. And I, I know some people that are just, boy, I know one person in particular that is, taught me, I mean, she's like the Bible of, uh, of listeners, you know, and of listening. So I know it's possible because I've seen it done before. I've actually not heard it done before. Does that make sense? Because if I heard it done before, that would mean they were talking. So if I didn't hear it, that means they weren't talking. Anyway, so it's a mental process, and it's a process of extraction which is a very attention-heavy process for the human brain, making it very, very tiring to listen intently for any length of time. But just like any activity, if you practice, it will become easier. If you neglect it or take it for granted, you'll lose the ability to perform it effectively. It's easy to walk through your day, not hearing other people or even the world around you. Techniques we use to listen um, are like a pattern recognition. You know, uh, one, one of the processes humans use to listen effectively is pattern recognition. An example of this is the cherry effect of all names. So they give it the cherry effect. Although I love cherries. I mean, I love black cherries. Oh, my gosh, I could eat a bag of them. I love them. And they're really good for you, too. I think they got a lot of polyphenols in them, I believe, if I remember. Uh, anyway, if you are at a party where there is lots of noise and someone says your name, you will tend to hear it, okay? Because we're pre-programmed to sift the world around us and it's noise for potential sources of opportunity or danger. You know, so remember opportunity or fear of possible danger. Differencing. This is another very useful technique we use. If we are in an environment of constant background noise, after a couple of minutes, we will begin to filter out that constant noise so we don't hear it. That's pretty interesting. The brain's an incredible thing. It just really is. You know? Wow. We listen to differences. We discount sounds that remain the same. Uh, there are, in fact, a whole range of filters which reduce the noise down to what we pay attention to. And most people are entirely unconscious of these filters. Okay, so 
Let me give you an example, boys and girls. If you close your eyes, you'll quickly become aware of the size of the room or space you are in and how many people are around you. Why we are losing the ability to listen. The need for accurate and careful listening is fast disappearing because we can record and, and share conversations as live so easily because the physical cost of listening is so tiring in terms of energy and brain power. Uh, it, it is tiring to listen. It does require a certain amount of energy to listen. In the 21st century, Many people take refuge in headphones, and we all have them. And you know, either they're um, AirPods, I believe that's what they're called, or, um, or or some sort of device that fits in, or some sort of Bluetooth device, uh, which which turn big public places into our own personal sound bubbles, where nobody is listening to anybody. Um, we're also becoming impatient. We don't want to listen to the full story anymore. We want sound bites, sound bites of everything. You know, just just give me the sound bite. Don't tell me the details. The art of storytelling, and I, I love the storytell. I, I do. I mean, I think it's it's really you know. I, I'm just gonna say I, uh, I, I I hate to call it a gift. I hate to call anything I have a gift, but if it comes from God, it's a gift. So. Uh, storytelling, yeah, I think I could do it. Uh, I couldn't do it when I was a kid, but I can certainly take a bite out of it now. Uh, so the art of storytelling in deep conversation is being replaced by personal broadcasting. Why do we need to listen? Okay, it, it's, a, it's a massive problem that we're losing the ability to listen because listening is our route to understanding. Uh, understanding a world where nobody is listening to anybody else. It would become a very scary place very quickly indeed. So what can you do? Well, here's the ticket, okay? Here's what you could do. Practice listening consciously every day. We should attempt to connect and try to understand each other and, and the physical world around us. You know, five quick daily exercises to improve your ability to listen and understand are. If you're interested, you've, if you've come this far, you know, listen a little further. And uh, I guess fortunate for me, I can't hear you on the other side saying, come on, get on with it already. With, you know, quit dragging. Okay, I'm coming. I'm doing it. Number one, silence. Just three minutes a day to reset your ears and recalibrate so that you can hear the quiet again. So grab three minutes of silence somewhere in the quiet. The mixer, number two. Pick a noisy environment like a coffee bar uh, and listen to how many channels of sound you can hear. How many individual channels in that mix am I listening to? It's a great exercise for improving the quality of your listening. So I, th I think what they're also talking about, listening to music, listening to people, the conversations, the banging of the barist baristas, I believe they call them. Number three, boys and girls, number three, savoring. Enjoy a mundane sound. Running water, a car, a wash machine, really listen to it. I mean, get into that sucker. Okay. All right, well. Don't get into it because we gotta call the we gotta call the other guys the fire people to get you out because policemen are too good at getting you out. They'll put you in there if they want to get some info. Okay, disregard. Director, make a note of that. Strike that. Number four, the listening position. This is probably the most important of all of these. The idea that you can move your listening position to what's appropriate to what you're listening to. This is playing with those filters, being consciously aware of the filters and how they work for you. Okay, so number five is something called, the acronym is RASA, or RASA, R-A-S-A. -A. R, meaning and standing for, or, um, um, being uh, the receive 
of that which means pay attention to the person. So R means receive. Pay attention to the person. A, again, we're going off of RASA, the acronym. A is going to be appreciate. Make little noises like, hmm, oh, okay. There's a little cockney, I think, in the, in the English accent. I think that's cockney. Well, whatever. And then as for summarize, the word so is very important in communication. And A for ask. Ask questions afterwards. Remember, there is always more than one answer. So um, I, I think what I wanted to say was that People, be a better listener, and I think you'll be pretty surprised at maybe more, more of the information you may be seeking may become available to you, um, or you'll certainly make the other person smile and be a little bit happier when they can communicate with you. And, and then when it's your time to communicate, I would venture to say that you can also require the same of them. And then you guys are negotiating. I mean, you're, you're shaking hands. You're, you're on your way to uh, decoding and encoding and coding and, you know, sending information back and forth instead of stepping on each other, and which can either be so embarrassing or so rude, you know. But, um, and I would say that if you, if you meet someone, and going back to the dating in the relationship world, and whether it be on the, the actual meet and greet, or just on the phone with someone for the first time, or even subsequent times, you know, I, I think we get excited, and we want people to know more about us, and our achievements, and, and who we are, and when they're on the other side, and they're maybe hoping that they'll get an opportunity or a chance, but if you, if you show them that you have a real, uh, an interest in them and an interest in their life and what have they done and what do they want to do, who are they? You know, give them a chance to speak. Give them a chance to tell you, okay? And, you know, if you're really that jacked up about talking and you can't stop and you just can't, can't prevent it, then go into the mirror. Talk to talk to that uh, that person in the mirror. You know, I mean, they love you, don't they? Well, don't talk to them too much. They might walk away. And if they do, time for the exorcist. Okay. Well, listen. Thanks for joining me. I hope this makes some sense to you. Uh, but uh, be better listeners. You know, give people an opportunity to talk um, because. Sometimes they get a little frustrating already. They're making, everybody's got their checklist. And so they're probably, you know, checking boxes while you're stepping all over them. Have a great day. And remember, poets, man, get out and write some poetry. Write something for that person in the glass because then maybe they won't walk away on you when you really need them. Okay.